Hello everyone, before I start showing you this knife in front of me, let me real quickly explain why I make videos for YouTube, and videos like this one in particular. Um, like any knife aficionado knife fan, I plan my knife purchases really carefully, and I always want to know what I'm buying before I put out any money. So the reason I started making videos like this one is that many of the knives I've already owned or were interested in owning simply did not have any videos of it online, videos of it in action. Um, watching a YouTube video of a particular knife is kind of a big step for me when it comes to the research process of buying a new knife. So I basically decided to start making my own videos for when I felt that a particular knife did not have an online presence and I felt that potential purchasers might want to see a video of a knife. And so for this knife in front of me, I was presented an opportunity to buy it for well below market value. And upon searching for some information on it, there was very little out there. And uh, what is more frustrating than finding no videos of a knife in question is finding, you know, one or two videos, you, you know, on YouTube, of course, with a knife that, you know, they're so poorly filmed that they're just useless. You know, poor lighting, poor focus, you know, lack of close-up shots, you know, poor, no commentary, or at worst, you know, putting music in the background instead of actually talking about the knife. Um, so I want to remedy this. I want you to know that even my early videos had some of those problems and were pretty terrible quality-wise. But um, I basically want to try to produce knife videos now that I would enjoy watching myself and hopefully, you know, inform potential buyers of these knives. And so looking at my past videos, you'll notice that I have a lot of Mantis knives. I've owned them, put them on camera. And just to clarify, you know, I'm not a huge Mantis fan. You know, and, you know, in fact, the current Mantis knife company is just a shell of what it was, you know, a few years ago back when um, Jared West was running the company and the so-called Mantis Militia fan group. And I won't get too much into that history about that because you can Google all that. But um, like him or hate him, Jared West was a pretty charismatic character, was able to bring a lot of interest to the brand, a lot of new fans to it. But what also ended up happening is that he brought a lot of outside hate on the brand. And to this day, you know, Mantis does not have a good reputation for quality designs, um, honesty, things like that. But when I show you this knife right now, I'm going to try and give it as fair a shake as I can and let you make up your minds. Um, so, the, of course, onto the knife right here. This is the Mantis um, MT4 TIB, the Echo. And so the TIB in the name, TI is for titanium because the liner of the knife is titanium. Um, and the B stands for the bead blast finish because the other version of this knife is called the Chaos and it has a pure black finish. Um, I prefer the bead blasted finish. I just think it looks better. Um, downside to that, however, is this knife has some serrations, whereas the original version that's black is just a plain edge. So that's just an okay trade-off for me. So this knife I purchased from eBay, and I bought it from what I assume is the account of uh, Mr. Knife Guy. And um, I'm familiar with that name, Mr. Knife Guy, because he was a f or is and was a frequent poster to the Mantis Facebook page. And so I'm assuming that he might be out of business now because he was selling off all of his knives, it seemed, for a really, really low price. And so that's the only reason I really purchased this knife here. I certainly didn't pay anything near that um, suggested price. So here I am. I can show you this knife today. Check it out. And it may not float your boat in terms of style, but let's take a look at it. And uh, it was very inexpensive, so I yeah, I don't really regret it, even if we see that there are some little problems with it. So take a look at this knife. Um, overall, some of the specs, of course, the blade here is four inches. A uh, nice tanto tip, you know, that American-style tanto, very extreme-looking. And like I mentioned, it also has the serrated edge there. Um, overall length is about nine and a half inches, so this is a huge knife. It's a biggie. You know, so I can try and show you my hand. It fills up my hand and then some. I don't have huge hands, but you can see my grip at the bottom of the knife here. There is excess handle. You know, so this is a big, big knife. Um, it weighs about eight ounces, so it is not a lightweight knife either. 
So this is not the type of thing you're going to want to carry, you know, in your dress pants when you go to work, you know, but um, I've carried it for a few days now, and when you're wearing a pair of jeans, you know, it's not too bad. You know, it is slightly heavier than your average pocket knife, though. Um, as for just the details of the knife, the blade itself is S30V. So it's just a big chunk of S30V and has all these kind of shapes cut out into it and into the top. The jimping is real extreme. You know, it's meant to portray a certain style. And if that isn't your style, you know, this might not be the knife for you. So right here you can see the detent hole and kind of the travel it, it uses when it closes and opens. The thumb studs up here also serve as kind of a blade stop. Um, but as you open the knife, it is smooth. You know, so I'd, I'd expect that for a knife of this price level, it's smooth. Um, blade is very sharp, came hair shaving sharp out of the box, so that's also a positive thing to say about it. Um, centering of the blade is not there. You can kind of see just from this shot here, it is favoring the non-locking side. And so it's almost rubbing, almost rubbing. I've adjusted the pivot a little bit. Um, and you just want it to be enough so that you can open it easily, but enough that it won't rub the side. So it's a very delicate balance there. But not currently rubbing, but it's very close. Um, let me show you the lockup of this knife. And we'll talk about that. You can see, let me get that to focus. There you go. You can see the lockup. When you open it slow, it's like this. Kind of early, not too bad. And that's with the slow controlled opening and I say that because this knife when you use the flipper yes it has a flipper this little tiny nub on the back right there when you use the flipper to fling this thing open and you use any amount of force the lockup suddenly uh oh uh oh the lockup is late and um, being a titanium liner it is a bit sticky so it's kind of hard to do sometimes to close. Um, other than that, the titanium liner is in fact titanium. I did take it magnet to it. It did not stick. And the fact that it is um, kind of a sticky lockup with the steel lock face, you know, does lead me to believe it is real titanium, of course. Um, and what's also interesting about this lockup, let me just close it there. Look at that little notch in the lock or at the tang. Let me close it and you can get a closer look. Let me wipe that down. Take a look if I can get the sucker to focus. There you go. See that little notch? They cut out a notch in the bottom of the tang. And I assume that this notch was put there. Let me see if I can get it to focus on it. No, it doesn't really want to. But there's a notch right there. And I assume they cut it out so that the lock would fit right into it. And in a perfect world, that's exactly what happens when you open it nice and slow. But like we just saw, when you use the flipper, or even use the thumb studs with an aggressive opening, that lock travels almost all the way to the end of the blade. So the good news is, even whether the lockup is early or late, there is no play. Side to side, up and down, it's very feel solid feeling, and that's when the locks are here or all the way extended. So no matter how it opens, the, the knife feels very secure in the open position. Um, one more feature they kind of added in on it, it is a big knife but they put this choil right here kind of mechanical looking but it does let you grip up on the knife and then you can kind of make use of this extreme jimping I guess if you're going to do a close-up cutting task. Um, still got a lot of handle for this knife though so even if you have huge hands this might be you know okay to use. pocket clip on this knife. You can see there it is reversible for left or right hand side carry and it is only tip up. So the, the pocket clip does not carry super deep um, but it does hold the knife securely. I'll toss in a photo right here and you can see how it looks in pocket. But the weight of the knife, you know, when you, if you wear this with a light pair of pants or shorts, you know, it almost causes your pocket to sag a little bit. So you're going to want to wear these with, you know, more stout pants. Um, one more thing I'll mention, 
is the uh, retention in the handle. Um, I might be afraid if this wasn't tip up carry of this handle coming loose because the, the retention is not that great. See how I just did that? I just flung the knife out of the handle. So the detent's not doing a great job of holding it in there. You know, so it kind of falls out sometimes. And I'm really nitpicking. That might be something the average knife user never notices, but um, since you're going to be carrying this knife with the tip-up position, that shouldn't be an issue because this blade will always be up against you know the, the side of your pants. So not, not a huge deal. Um, but again, just looking at the styling of the knife, it has these G10 scales on it. Um, it, you, it either turns you on or it doesn't, you know, and that's that's what it comes down to. It has these strange notches in here that don't serve really any purpose, other than maybe lightening the knife. But at eight, eight, eight ounces, it's it's a huge, huge knife. Um, the pivot is adjustable only if you have a special tool that can get into those holes. Um, I was able to adjust it without too much issue. But again, this is the Mantis MTF4TIB. Huge name there. But let me show you in comparison to some other knives. So we have our Echo here at the bottom. Here is its stable mate, the uh, Kanitsa from Mantis. So you can see it's even bigger than that. And this is already a beefy knife as well. So it has that same style of pivot. Um, this one's 154CM. This one's S30V. But um, I actually kind of prefer the Kanitsa, not only because it's a little bit less in length, but um, opens a little nicer. There's no problem with the lockup on the Kanitsa. You know, just it's a, it's a nice smooth knife. You know, fairly, fairly decent. Um, also compare it to the Kershaw Blur. Try, I try and chose something that most people might have had experience with. So here's the Blur, and of course it is also very much smaller than the Echo. Um, but I just wanted you to see the size comparison. So, so um, much larger knife there. But if you have any questions about this knife, feel free to leave me a comment. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, take a look at what I've shown you and make your own decisions if it's a good knife. You know, if you paid that price for it, I would not be very happy. At the price I paid for it, you know, it's a decent user knife. Um, so go ahead and leave me any comments if you would like to. But thank you for watching this video.